with today's Live in Five. Today is Thursday, June 13th. It is 5.01 p.m. Okay, so we've been talking about gut health. We've been talking about the microbiome. We talked about organic foods. We talked about Roundup, glyphosate, how bad it is. Um, but our talk on the our gut health is not complete without talking about probiotics. Okay, so according to the World Health Organization, probiotics are defined as living microorganisms which when administered in adequate amounts confer health benefits on the host. Okay, they help suppress bad bacteria, modulating intestinal immunity, stabilizing the microbiome, and affecting the composition and function of the microbiome. Hi, Teresa. So basically, how do, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that translate to? Basically, it is good bacteria that we need to replace and put back into our bodies so that our gut can do what it needs to do in a healthy way. Okay, so living uh, bad lifestyles, eating poorly, being exposed to toxins, all those other things um, all do negative things to the microbiome. So the probiotics are the plus where all those other things are the minus. Okay, Probiotics are now being proposed as a preventive and therapeutic way to improve health and wellness. They are being classified as functional food or a functional drink if your probiotic comes in a liquid form, or if you even have probiotics in your skincare products, it is called functional skincare. Okay, so pretty amazing that it now has its own classification. Um, probiotics have shown to be beneficial for many conditions, including cardiovascular disease, metabolic syndrome and obesity, autoimmune disorders, neurologic disorders, including Alzheimer's and even diabetes. Okay, so there are a lot of things that can be done positively by just adding something simple like a probiotic. Now, the term probiotic covers a wide variety of beneficial bacterial families. Research has shown that some strains are actually more effective than others for treating different types of conditions, and it's important to consume probiotics in sufficient amounts. Probiotics are typically measured in CF use or colony forming units. Some are effective at one to two billion CFUs and others may require 20 billion CFUs to achieve a desired effect. Now there are no studies showing taking too many however is dangerous okay only <laughs> only expensive but it's not dangerous okay um, a review of 38 studies found certain probiotics improve symptoms of anxiety, depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, poor memory, and even autism. Uh, the name of the bacteria or the class are Bifidobacterium and Lactobacillus strains are the ones that are most commonly used. Again, the names are a little bit long, but you know, you'll see them on the back of the bottles when you look for them. Hello, Slobodanka. Hello, Mary. Um, not BFUs, CFUs, colony forming units. Okay. Um, a review of 14 studies found probiotics led to a reduction in bad cholesterol and higher doses even lowered blood pressure after about eight weeks of using them. Okay, so very interesting. Studies suggest that probiotics shift the balance of gut bacteria in a way that increases your body's defenses against allergies, infections, and even cancer. Okay, both pre and probiotics have been shown to boost immunity and decrease overall inflammation. Before we move on, just to clarify what is prebiotic versus probiotic. The probiotics, again, are the bacterial colonies. The prebiotics are basically the food that feeds the bacteria. Okay, so a prebiotic would be things that have fiber, some type of fibrous substance that allows that bacteria to eat. Okay, studies are underway to um, testing probiotics as a way to reduce food allergy symptoms, specifically think about lactose, gluten, and peanut allergies, which would be pretty darn cool if we could get rid of those, the massive quantities of people who have 
problems with those allergies just by improving their gut bi microbiome. Several studies have confirmed probiotics should be a major consideration in treating diabetes naturally. Hmm. One study of over 200,000 patients showed probiotic-rich yogurt reduced the risk of developing type 2 diabetes at all. And another study showed they improved insulin sensitivity, thereby managing blood sugar more effectively. So it's pretty amazing what these little guys can do, okay? Healthy, good bacteria. Um, so the research is just really at the beginning stages, which is pretty cool. Um, where are we going to be going with healthy gut bacteria? Only time's going to tell, but the studies are really starting to build up and show major, major benefits. So we're going to continue talking tomorrow about probiotics and what kind of things you should be looking for when you're choosing a probiotic and what things you are trying to avoid. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you're watching on the replay, share this video, or if you're watching now, share this with your friends because this is super important. You want to have, everybody should be taking a probiotic, especially with the diets that most people eat. Eek, you need to really be improving your gut microbiome. So share this with your friends, share it on your page, send it to them as a, in, in Messenger, just some way to get the word out. All right, so hope you guys are having an awesome day. I will see you tomorrow for another Live in Five.